let's start so in today's session what we will do is we'll see how to convert physical servers to virtual that is one thing a very old school concept still we will try to do it okay another one is how to migrate vm i'm saying offline to cloud these two are two different concepts but we'll give you a simple overview on the cloud will not log in and will not create a machines in the cloud but i'll give you what exactly we need to imagine i have one physical server okay and have one ESX server. What is the ESX server IP? 192.168.1.151. Okay, and what is the physical server IP? I don't have any physical server. So what I will do? I will take my laptop. This is my physical server. So now I want to convert my physical server as a virtual machine inside my ESXi host. Okay. So after conversion, what should happen? It should create one virtual machine here and you can power on and manage it. In which situation you will use this kind of stuff? Any idea or any guess? Vivek. Yes, sir. Vivek. Yes, sir. No idea. Imagine no. I mean, so it's early 2010 concept. So these are nowadays I haven't seen a people are using this anymore, but this is how it works. You have a physical servers in your data center. In your data center, you have a couple of physical servers. Those are very old legacy servers, six years or seven years old. Now, now frequently you have observed that some of the components are getting failed. Randomly hard disks are failing or memory issues, power, power cable or power supply unit failures. Randomly you are observing a couple of these things and no no vendor support nothing because they are already legacy and seven years old so the plan is either you replace with the new physical server or think something and convert them into virtual rather than physical because I, you don't want to purchase you don't want to purchase physical servers understood in that case what you will do you will see what kind of operating system 2003, 2008, 2012, 16, 19, which one? Okay, this is my 2008, it's okay. Now it 2008 is also end of life, it's fine. So what you can do, you can convert this physical server, physical server means physical Windows machine into virtual Windows machine. It will create a same exact copy of 2008 server. Later on, later on, you can start upgrading the machine over here to 2016 or 2019 provided your application and OS and other compatibility metrics are matched. That's a different scenario. But what you can do, you can simply upgrade it and you'll have your old old server replaced with new server with new operating system. Customer is happy. Customer doesn't know whether it is a physical or virtual. He need a server. You offer them a server. That's it or else customer doesn't customer knows everything customer doesn't have a budget to purchase a new physical server and he is asking you to do some alternate options or alternate solutions for the same problem then you can convert that into virtual and you can shut down the physical server and crash it securely dispose of and assign the same ip to this and customer can use the machine your physical server is now moved to virtual. It 
will be working as a single VM within your VMware infrastructure. Okay, how to do that? We have a couple of tools to perform these kind of things. One is VMware standalone converter. I have this tool and a couple of other tools are there uh, like Jareto or Cloud. I didn't recollect the physical to virtual converters. Let me search because it's, it's been a long time, almost like 10 years. Converter. What else? Let's see. How do we get a standalone converter everywhere? Let's use some third party tools. Starwind B2B migrator or B2B converter. Right? Like this, you have a couple of tools are there, some third party tools that you can use it. What I will do, I will use native physical to virtual converter. What you have to do, go to converter. You can download the converter. Let me see. VMware vCenter converter standalone client that is already installed in my okay so vmware standalone converter this you can download it okay i'll ping this url in the chat if you guys want to save it and you can download it later on <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, so that you can download later on. So what I'll do, I have a standalone converter which is already installed on my system. So converter works in a two different ways. One is I have a converter and I have a machine. This converter is installed on XYZ server and it want to convert ABC machine so what you have to do you have to install a converter server and converter client and this server will talk to client and get the data and move it to the center or ESXi host that is one way another way is standalone converter is there I have a client ABC directly install the client on this and convert the whole server itself self converter in the sense you'll install this you'll install the agent or you'll install the client on the same server which server you want to convert into a virtual let's do this so on my laptop it is already installed convert machine right if i say convert machine see this machine or a remote machine when i say remote windows machine i have to provide these credentials now my laptop is acting as a server if i say remote machine my laptop is acting as a server i have to provide a remote machine i don't have any remote machine at the moment i'll say i want to convert this machine only there's no other machine in my home to convert i have laptop and i have esx server i don't have any other laptop to convert fair enough next Let me see. Let me close this off. VMware standalone converter. I don't know. 
been a long see from 98 onwards it is there and after 2018 they haven't even load on machine okay next yeah admin rights so run as admin you'll be able to perform it now where you want to convert you want to convert to a workstation if you have a workstation and convert it as a vm that is also possible or you want to convert into vmware infrastructure i said this is my esxi host or else you want to convert a machine inside the virtual vcenter that is also possible give the vcenter name and vcenter login and password it will connect to the vcenter and you can convert into virtual machine inside the vcenter that's okay i'll i have a esxi host i'll give a full permissions root has a full permissions i'll give root permissions so that it can go and deploy anything inside it can go and perform any action inside the esxi host right so ignore now you see it is already showing how many vms what we have inside the inside the esxi host that's fine so what i will do user laptop dot something some sort of naming with this name the machine will be created next now you see resource groups are there that's of no use now let's keep this aside it's a very old legacy concept okay where you want to place your virtual machine okay in ssd it has around 263 gb free space now block size is 1 mb as per my data store vmfs5 machine version now you see i'm explaining this other session remember update manager vm hardware version compatibility yes. forward and backward now you see it is showing all the compatible versions version 13 is applicable for 6.7 and 7.0 it's 14. remember what we're doing another day so let me go to let me use the latest compatibility or i can use 8 it supports legacy version as well next you will not the destination does not support okay with this version okay 11 from 11 onwards it will support bios latest bios is applicable from 10 or 11 i don't remember exactly but yeah it supports from that and once you will not anyway you will not be able to complete the complete the conversion because you see it's huge around 250 gb data i have a 430 so i don't want to convert everything what i will do let me drag this a little bit and you see ssd that's fine select the volumes to copy okay and c drive the side minimum size is 225 GB is required because because let me go to C drive how much around 220 200 GB is used right around the 200 204 GB is used so what you need at least minimum 200 GB space is required on 225 GB space is required on your destination. It is matching. Then only it will support. Okay, that is one thing. Now, do you need? Do you require 4 GB memory? I'll say yes. I can give 4 GB here. Another. How many CPUs? Like this, I can alter. Edit. I have two NIC cards which is popping up here. I'm sorry, one is fine. I'll put it on VM network and VM net 3. Okay. And if I go to services, this 
many services which are running inside my laptop and you want you want all these services to copy yes if you want you can leave as it is and additional options additional options what you can do synchronize changes schedule version yeah synchronize changes what it will do okay the you have a machine which is being converted since last two hours okay during these two hours if your laptop is on your laptop is on maybe in a production server server is on customer is putting some data in it so those changes also synchronized once the cloning is done okay and post conversion what you have to do what you want to perform system restore checkpoints on the converted virtual machine it doesn't require reconfigure destination virtual machine if you want you can reconfigure install vmware tools automatically and don't power on the machine we'll do it leisurely because i need to change the ips and stuff okay and cpu and memory leave it next this is the overall configuration I'll say finish. If I say finish, it's giving synchronization can't be enabled. Okay, fine. Let me go back. Synchronization changes not required. Fine, finish. At least convert a standalone machine. Now, from my laptop, the job is submitted. It is showing one hour to one hour six minutes to convert. Let me go to ESXi host and you see user laptop. One machine has been created. Operating system is Windows 10. If I go to yes, user laptop one, so on so domain, four CPU, four GB memory, and hard disk somewhere around 250 250 gig. It is not at showing yeah 226 GB. Okay, and one network adapter. That's it. And 4 GB data has been transferred so far. Okay. And if you just refresh, you'll see the data transfer will keep on changing and it is now sending the data. Bring this up. Summary. Okay, if you look at source system information is powered on this machine where the VMware converter standalone server runs on Windows I haven't specified amount of CPU on memory that can be utilized during the conversion it can use it can use up to the available limit and you should install VMware tools and if there are any checkpoints and reconfigure virtual machine is there you can perform on the destination machine okay that is different and on the destination machine the configuration is this name version is this on this host under data store thick provisioning oh my god i should have put the thin provisioning thick provisioning what it will do it will completely occupy 260 gb right that is what we discussed remember now if i go back and go to storage ssd you see the whole space is gone free 22 gb it is occupying everything entire disk is formatted right that's okay let's go to laptop see data is still not committed it is still formatting i believe 200 gb okay once the formation is done once the forma formation is done then it start sending the data so you see let's track the progress cloning convert virtual machine create a snapshot the volume the default volume cloning is done and now it is started c drive so far 
percent only completed it is showing transfer rate right couple of other information that's it we cannot do much now we just have to sit and watch the progress until this machine is converted okay you cannot power on you cannot do anything unless until you got the successful message here okay any questions on this this is how you can convert your physical machine into virtual machine but in real time it will be like lengthy process there will be a cutover process will be there during the cutover what you will do you will shut down the you will uh, sorry you will run the final synchronization and you will shut down the physical server and you will power on the virtual server and assign the same ip where the physical server is having and start the machine and ask users to test it if a users are saying okay i am able to access it no errors nothing everything is good then server is powered on leave as it is in the virtual machine and the physical servers cable can be disconnected physically and the server can be decommissioned after 15 or 30 days at least you need to keep that for next 15 or 30 days based on the standard retention policy if something goes wrong of some of the users want to go back and check the configuration or some of the users want to go back and see uh, what kind of shortcuts everything will be copied by the way but if in case in worst condition if they want to do something that is possible keep the physical servers at least for a week or month based on your company policy and later on you can run the decommission on the particular server this is how it works in the real world still not still not up, updating it is still one percent it's okay i will what i will do is i will leave i will minimize this until we finish the session now let's go ahead and discuss about the first one what we covered so far okay there is one more concept called there is one more concept called v2v virtual to virtual yeah tell me you are not audible hello hello you are not not at all audible so sunil sorry you type the question over there i am not i am not able to hear you anything your voice is breaking a lot hello hey question type the question over there yeah i am waiting for your question only okay 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 started moving the data it is showing 9 hours now so far it is unable to determine the amount of data because it is still formatting the disk in the back end so now the disk format is completed and it start moving the data you see it is now starting the data right if i go back to virtual machine refresh now it's not updating unless until you power on it will not update i believe yeah because it's fully occupied and data store itself is utilized here that's okay not an issue once the once the at the end of the class anyway I'll, i'm going to cancel this and delete the virtual machine and that will give me the space back yeah type the question man i haven't got the question yet typed in whatsapp or what hello i don't know vivek you still there yeah i am here okay uh, are you able to hear anything from sunil i am not able to no 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 i think this is some issue okay he is uh, he is having some internet issues okay let's wait i'll pause the recording for a bit until he reconnect yeah what you're saying this formatting 
Okay. I'm sorry, boss. Why the data will go will be gone? I I said I have this. Imagine I have this virtual machine. Sorry, I have this physical server here. I'm sorry. I'm talking about this physical server. Okay. This physical server is there. It is having 280 or a 204 GB of data and it is saying at least you need a 225 GB space here where it has three data stores. Okay, it has three data stores inside the data store. You need to show them at least a minimum 225 GB. Then only the machine can be converted. I said, okay, SSD has around 260 GB. You take 230 or 220. Then what it is doing, it is taking a part of a free space and it is formatting. Okay, that okay. is what it is doing. Lots of confusion in this. Then you're thinking something else, I believe. what it is doing let's, let's let's keep this aside it, will, it is not going to finish by the way let's see the amount of time and amount of rate transfer rate it is it's gonna take a little while it's okay I'll minimize this let's understand virtual to virtual virtual to virtual means you have a total legacy environment 3.0 3.5 okay and I have latest 6.7 I, I have a few virtual machines running here around 50 machines or only 25 machines let's say 25 virtual machines small environment okay the customer is using this since last eight years or something VMware environment now it's been a while to upgrade everything on to latest now when i look at the latest 6.7 or 7.0 i want to use okay what he did he purchased three new esxi host three new esxi host and installed 6.7 and created a cluster okay and kept it ready here user has a five esxi host long back right less capacity machines five vsxi host one v center one v center and 25 machines now i want to bring everything over here so what are the options that we have first of all you can remove these host and add it to here but the problem is 3.0 or 3.5 nowhere compatibility First of all, you need to sit and do the upgrade of these host. If you upgrade these host, they will disconnect from this vCenter because the vCenter is running on 3.0 or 3.5. Okay, you cannot upgrade and you cannot <clears throat> you cannot add these hosts into new vCenter because there's no compatibility. If you add these hosts into vCenter, somehow you can migrate the machines and do the stuff. That is also not possible. Right. So what you will do? You have two ways. One is first upgrade a vCenter from 3.5 to 5.0 or 5.1. Then again upgrade from 5.1 to 6.0 or 6.5. Possibly you have to validate the compatibility matrix plus two or minus two something. A very very lengthy process i'm not going to cover that all our discussion is more of v2v okay so you have 25 machines if you bring those machines and move it here it will take two days but these upgrades and all will take two months so what is the feasible option let's do one thing i will get one standalone converter connect to this vcenter and connect to this vcenter as well Select the virtual machine, okay, and convert into a new virtual machine here. Virtual to virtual. 25 machines, maybe in two days or two weeks. Then 
Shut down these machines. Start these machines. Very simple. You got? You got it. What I'm saying? Yes. Okay. In that case, what you have to select? Nothing. Select a virtual machine. Instead of this machine, I will select remote machine. I will say legacy vm1 dot vc dot or abc dot com. This is one of the virtual machine which is sitting on the legacy machine. I just need that machine name. That's it. And administrator password. That will automatically connect to legacy machine virtual server. Now click next. Follow the steps and give the destination as a new vCenter. It will automatically create a machine and the data transfer will be done like this. Once the machine is fully converted, shut down this and send the same IP over here and start the machine. Done. That's it. Anything else? Fair enough. Rather than spending too much time in upgrading a host and all because anyway after a month, once the machines are moved from here to here, you are going to shut down these servers and throw it away. Then why you are spending in upgrades and all? There is no point to upgrade, right? Yes. In this situation, we will use virtual to virtual. Fair enough? Any questions on this? No, sir. No? Alright. So, let's go ahead and do the small discussion on VM offline conversion. Means what? Let me go back to another whiteboard. Access server and it has one virtual machine running on Windows 2016 and it has only C drive, no data, nothing, only C drive operating system is there. So, what I want to do, I have I have a VMware infrastructure around 64 hosts and 2000 virtual machines so on i'll not go in detail imagine this is the current setup now company company has adopted azure as a public cloud platform and they gave you access to the azure portal and they said can you please create a virtual machine over here rather than creating a machines over here because the capacity level has reached the threshold of 80% and there is no plans to add more capacity in VMware. Let's do one thing. Let's utilize Azure as a new platform and whatever the new machine that you are going to create, you just create over here. You getting my point? That is what yes. the agreement. That is what the new project. And also, there is a one more project which is going on out of these 2000 hosts sorry 2000 virtual machines you have around 30 percent of virtual machines are non-critical non-critical in the sense you can shut down them and leisurely you can move them here so that this will come down to 70 so that it can run without any issues environment will run without any issues out of 2000 your duty is identify 30 percent of those machines or 10 percent let's say example if i said 80 to 70 10 percent so 10 percent of those machines and move it here how you can migrate i said non-critical machines i don't want to use live migration tools and all Jerito or any other cloud endure a lot of, lot of tools are there in the market okay i don't want to utilize any of those tools i want to use offline migration in that case what i can do i will identify the machine i'll power off i will export as a ovf or i will export as a ova you can do that right that machine will be saved into your local machine hello hello you're getting my point Please yes, give yes. some acknowledgement. Otherwise, I'm feeling like I'm talking to my monitor. 
okay what i will do i'll deploy demo where it is yeah i have the i have the vmdk file right yeah let's still let's go the go with the process software uh, tiny where is my tiny yeah, tiny in provisioning do not power on yes see where we are with this cancel where we are with this five percent so far eight mb per second transfer rate from my laptop to vfxi host okay and that's a different story now let's move ahead and demo I have this machine what i will do i'll simply export and get a couple of machines here right i got a couple of machines like this so this is my virtual machine i have exported into my local go to downloads demo see these are the three files now tell me in which file actual data is sitting or OS data is sitting. VMDK? Do you agree? Yes. Hmm? Yes. So now what I will do, I will pick this VMDK file. Okay. Remember, Azure won't support VMDK. Azure needs some sort of VHD format files. It means Azure is based on the Hyper-V, remember. Okay, hyper v so it will it, it supports any file in vhd you have vmdk file here so what you have to do you have to convert this vmdk file to vhd file how to do that v m uh, let's say convert Microsoft Virtual Machine Converter. Okay, there is a tool called Microsoft Virtual Machine Converter. Next, Virtual Machine and Convert Virtual Machine Migrate to Azure, or you can do both. Right? Next, you need to have a subscription and certificate that you need to log in into Azure portal and get these credentials okay let's see this is different okay I'll not go inside now this is what this is going to be never-ending if I go inside so what I will do I'll go back I'll convert to Hyper-V next you have your machine Live, this is this is I'm talking about live migration okay and you gave the IP address of your virtual machine Hyper-V host and give the password that will connect and select the virtual machine again kind of your this converter only now the, the discussion what I'm doing is I want to convert VMDK file to VHD file so how to do that let me go back to convert VMDK files to Azure. Let's see. Copy. Convert VHD. There is a PowerShell, run as administrator, what is the command, cd, users, download, 
downloads you have a lot of these right i have one of the file Convert hyphen VHD VMDK file believe it will not work let's try our luck i need to get this okay What I found. see i need those commands or else there is a there is a commands to how to convert vmdk to vhd some articles will be there just a moment have it that is already installed right c program files and virtual machine converter cd microsoft virtual machine converter and vm c this one right Convert to virtual machine hard disk. Source path. Source path is
let me go to cd users downloads now is there this file i want to convert this one right this file i want to convert into the same name bhd how to the test file <clears throat> see that's it that's only the command now it has been converted and if i go back and refresh you see one more disk file has been created this is virtual machine hard disk image file vhd right click properties is VHD file okay. VHD file right this file I need to upload into Azure then I can directly create a machine actually my watch my VMware supports VMDK file so you need to convert that into VHD and upload into Azure how to upload into Azure you have storage Explorer Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. Okay, if the storage account is there, you can directly let's see. You can use this and upload it into Azure and convert a or create a virtual machine from this VHD file. Or you create a virtual machine, attach this file. Okay, the machine will be booted with this file. Fair enough. Any questions? That is that is Azure procedure. But from a VMware perspective, if you want to convert, you need to convert the offline migration. Or you want to convert the images for offline migration using this convert. Now you can have storage accounts. And if I have a storage account, and log containers. It's not there because that I have deleted long back. I can I can create a blob a blob container and I can upload the file. It will automatically reflected in Azure portal. From there you can access it. That is the procedure. Okay, that is how this is a simple overview. How just to view how we can convert these machines. So or in line to our discussion what happens you can convert a physical servers to virtual virtual servers to virtual and virtual servers to cloud machines everything is possible with these tools okay let me check where we are with the conversion it is at eight percent and the data transfer is this estimated time is evening five o'clock now it is ten o'clock so I have to leave my laptop as it is. I have to leave the server as it is and it will get converted in in a day. Understood. So that is, that is not the case. What we can do, okay, uh, in, your, in your lab, if you want to do a practice, whenever, whenever you want to do it, uh, you can do virtual to cloud. That's more easy. When you got, when you got some cloud knowledge, okay, that conversions are more simpler than this but this is how in vmware this is how it works so that is what i want to show you two things right so microsoft well, Azure, micro, microsoft storage and uh, aws s3 are uh, same no? different aws cloud is different microsoft azure is different aws s3 you want to upload it to aws you will use s3 and microsoft azure uh, azure blob storage 
if you want to upload into Azure Cloud. Okay, let me stop uh, this we can... machine here. Just a moment, just a moment. Let me stop this machine conversion. That's it. Yeah, tell me. We can create machine uh, from uh, Microsoft Azure Storage. Yeah, if, we, if the image which I have shown, VHD file, you, you can get that image back to Azure. Using that file, you can create a virtual machine. Understood? <clears throat> Cancelling will take a long time. Not an issue. Let's leave it. Close this. Okay. So, multiple ways to do the things. Spend some time on your own R&D. You'll come to know what exactly it is. Now you see this. Yeah, this demo is no longer required. I'll do the cleanup later. Uh, again, my graphics problem. Let me stop the recording here.